Perfect days are far from perfect. And yours are coming. More perfect days are yours for the taking. If I were to tell you that perfect days were easy to have, would you want more? I'm Koki Barini, your perfect day engineer. The goal of the show is to bring you real life perfect day successes, struggles, and strategies so that you can create more perfect days in your life. Thank you for joining us. Today we have Tommy Breedlove, Hello. founder of Choose Goodness and TommyBreedlove.com. Tommy, thanks so much for being here. Yes. I, beautiful, perfect day. That was beautiful. Oh, I love I, it. It was. It really I was. Love it was it. amazing. And I loved our, our pre-show <laughs> chats about yeah. perfect day and you yeah. saying it's a great name. Yes. Because quite honestly, uh, sometimes people look at me with, with the, the platform of perfect day and the book of perfect day and all things perfect day and... They sometimes they give me this sort of deer in the headlights, like, oh, it's overwhelming, perfect. Like it's it, it's I, I think it might be scary to them. Yes. But I, I have to say, you're here today. If I were to ever be scared, it would be in your presence because I know you're out there, speaker, blogger, yeah. um, uh, podcaster. Yeah. And so you can teach me many things and you can make today perfect. <laughs> yeah. So I'm thrilled to have you here. Uh, I would love to start with an awesome story because I think you have a story of lifestyle mm. deficit disorder. <laughs> uh, and I think that the beauty in you being here is a male, uh, a largely male audience mm. who needs to hear your message of vulnerability and how you overcame what I call lifestyle deficit disorder. So will you take us through that? Because I love for the listeners to hear of sort of a state A to state B. So you woke up one day. I don't know how many literally years ago that was. You literally woke up uh, one day. Seven years ago, eight years ago. Take us through that and then, and then take us to where you are today. Because totally. I think today you're living perfect days. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely, I, you know, it's, so interesting that you said that, that perfect day might even scare people. But I think we're all seeking this thing called control, this thing called perfection, and this thing called balance. And we're never going to get in any of those. Right. But we can really work hard to get there. You know, it's, it's, it's definitely more of a, a noble goal to, tr to, to work at doing that as to you'll never get perfection, we'll never get control, and we'll never actually really achieve target. balance. But we can really work for it. So that, that's really a part of my story. So I'll take you right in the middle of it. So I was 36, 37 years old. I was a principal at a large financial consulting firm. Um, I was that guy that ye who turns the lights off last wins. I'm going to outwork you. I was wearing all this armor and mask, had the suit, had the car, had the title, had the prestige. And I come from very humble beginnings. And so I was chasing this thing called the dream and perfection and success and prestige and candidly power. And if you looked on the outside, it looked like maybe I had it all. I mean, my office, it was obnoxiously big on the top of a building, literally looking down on Atlanta, Georgia. It was kind of nuts. But inside I was crumbling. You know, I was this, uh, you know, I was arrogant on the outside, but on the inside I was truly insecure you know, was dealing with worthiness issues. My marriage was crumbling. Um, I was just compromising my integrity. I was compromising my life and my values. And if there was, I'm not kidding, Koki, a list of a hundred things not to do during that time in my life, I'd probably checked off like 95 on them. I was living that Viking fraternity locker room bullshit tough guy thing that we feel like I felt like I don't want to say we I'll just go back to me that I felt like I needed to put out there because inside I just didn't feel like I was good enough. And so when you said you, when I woke up, you know, after four days, it was in the, the new year time frame after four days of just complete chaos, complete, you know, sacrificing my dignity and integrity through this this chaotic lifestyle i literally woke up in a ditch and i'm not kidding two weeks before i'd probably in some major boardroom doing some you know 50 million dollar mergers and acquisitions deal and here i am literally in a ditch um borderline dying um, and i think i was unconsciously intending to go out that evening or those days to really maybe hopefully that would happen unconsciously but there was something inside of me said, you need more. You've got to get up. I don't know if it was something greater than me. I don't know if it was the last DNA of <laughs> integrity and dignity that I had at the time. I said, you've got to get up and you've got to do something more. 
And so I went on this transformation of mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual awakening. And when I say spiritual, I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about what brings us all together and literally transformed my life. And what really was cool, personally, I can't even describe what what happened to me from the friendships I made to the opportunities I've got to the happiness and joy that I was achieving every single day. But professionally, and this is where it's all kind of molded. I, I believe it's one big stew, but professionally, just because I was living from my value systems and who I wanted to be, I was promoted to international practice leader, senior partner with an election to the board of directors of this large financial consulting public accounting firm at 39 years old, just by being a, the human that I wanted to be. And so my whole platform now is I really believe that humans and men and women and people can have it all in life. I believe you can have balance to a degree, right? Mm -hmm. Because we choose to sometimes get out of balance for the right reasons, both family and personally. We do. But I do believe you can achieve meaning in life, build a legacy, live a life of significance and meaning, and you can do that without compromising your prestige, your financial integrity and success. And so that's a little bit about my story of where I, where I was and where I am. Today. Wow. I mean, I'm, I'm literally have to take a breath <laughs> and, and I just so appreciate you sharing. I, mean, oh, yeah. I really, I really mean that. Um, I know there are a lot of people that, that may be listening to say, wow, that's a great story, but maybe they're not ready. Mm. Maybe they're not ready to step down from that power and from that, identity, maybe they don't even know yet, um, men or women, uh, that uh, business owners or C-level like executives that are um, caught up in, in the value of what they do um, many hours of every day. Of they're, they're caught up of who that is. You know, I, I would like to hope that they're not going to have what I call an ER moment. It sounds like you in the ditch is what I call an <laughs> ER moment. Second one in my life. I'm on Evolution 3, yeah. It was oh, an wow. ER moment, yeah. So don't be a cat. We don't want nine <laughs> lives. I mean, just... <laughs> three's enough for me. I promise, yes. Cookie. I, I swear to you, I'm done. <laughs> okay, three's a charm then. The hat trick. We're going we're gonna to stay <laughs> with trick. that. Yes. We're going to stay on that one. Um, no number four. No, no four. I promise. Yeah. Okay. You have my word. Okay, that's good. <laughs> that's good. This train's been on the track now for about seven years, so we're good. <laughs> so that's what lifestyle dis- uh, deficit disorder looked like for you. And it just, I, I, we feel... We felt it. I felt it. Mm. You, know, you were spinning out of control, literally found yourself in a ditch. I like to, I want to underwhelm listeners. So you had to end up in a ditch and, and completely find transformation. Yeah. You know, an interesting, um, I'd love to talk more about transformation, but now what I would, would like for you to maybe glean for listeners is what can they do to potentially sidestep an ER moment? You had the hat trick. What are you going to (laughs) do? And also, how do you know when you're about to go back down that path again? Because I have pulled that LDD is just like ADD. Mm. It's like you have it. You have a propensity to always go back down that path. So do you have something that triggers like, oh, Oh, here it is again. And so with that, do you have a first go-to? What do you do so that you can sidestep and not have a number four? So I don't think I'll ever get down to that level for a number four again. Um, so let me, so what I do is I have surrounded, I am ridiculously dogmatic about who I surround myself with mm. from friends to my professional and personal network to even family members. I'm even dogmatic on certain family members of who I will allow or not allow into my life. And so if I feel off kilter, I have this network of humans who love and respect me both personally and professionally that I can just show up naked with literally. And I know it's a metaphor and be me and put it all out there and saying, is this some of the Tommy go round happening here? Am I in my own head or is these external forces actually is, is that, you know, help me, help me to, get better or find balance or am I compromising my value systems in this to be there? So that's what I do. Um, for your audience, you said, you know, you don't have to, it, you know, you don't have to have what you called an ER moment. I thought that was genius, but there is this gut feeling you have, and I'll give you some triggers to look for 
if you feel like you're always compromising and you don't feel like you have a choice, so many people feel like they don't have a choice. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. The truth is you don't have to do any of it. Um, but if you have this feeling inside that you're not fulfilled or you're not, you know, there's something, it's, it, it is a feeling that you have and be on the lookout for these things as well. If you're, if there, if there's this envy bug hitting you, we all get this envious bug, mm. you know, looking out over there and saying, Oh, they have the perfect life or they have the perfect day or that person's got this. If you're constantly looking in envy, envy and judgment to me, if you, if you can, if you're aware enough to look in the mirror and say, and you're constantly judging people that are different or look different or just judging in general, and there's this anger, fear, judgment, or envy thing that you're struggling with, or you just, there's something deep down. We all have it, that gut feeling, and that gut feeling is universal truth. So if there's something, or there's small compromises you're making in your right. life, when you're at home, you're thinking about work, when you're at work, you're thinking about, that's how it starts. And then it can spiral into huge things. You wouldn't believe the things I hear from some of the most successful people around that they start compromising even bigger and better things because they're trying to fulfill this void. And, you know, us as ambitious entrepreneurs and business leaders, we're always, you know, we're, we're pushing and pushing and pushing to reach this, this thing. And we don't even know what that thing is. And you're never going to get there. So how do you hit stop? So you start, you're like, oh, there's the envy bug. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm judging the hell out of that person. Or, oh, I, I do have this feeling and I find myself um, with fillers in my mm. life doing things that are not getting me to my greater good, not progressing me to my vision. Is there a pattern interrupt? And like, you know, I'd, I'd love just to give listeners a, I, I try not to use this because the best part of us is never cheap and easy, the best solutions. Yeah. But is there a, it, it, it's, it's creeping up in you. What do you do? <clears throat> do you go the, somewhere? The, yeah, do the you... honest answer. Yes. For, for me, I have a, I have a bazillion tools in my toolbox. Mm -hmm. I, constantly, I bet you do. I constantly am sharpening the pencil, going to conferences that put me out of my comfort zone. I'm constantly learning this stuff because even seven years into this journey, it's a lot of work. I mean, I, I would be lying to your listeners, to your your clients and, and the people that are digging this, that this thing, this journey of life, and if that that's the pursuit of happiness and meaning and balance, it's hard work. And so there is no magic pill. There's no quick fix. And there's no one coming to save you. Um, so I have this saying that I actually learned from river rafting guides. Mm -hmm. It'll be the title of the second book. It's called Participate in Your Own Rescue. Love and it. so is it really difficult? Yes. So the first thing you got to do is invest in yourself. You do. And investing yourself can look like a lot of different ways to become aware. What I've realized is that 90 something percent of humans, they don't know, they are not even aware that they're angry or envious or jealous. They just, you know, they're in their, and they're in these tough jobs doing these, making these tough decisions. And so they have to be perfect. And so that's a, it's hard work and it's not easy. The key is to become self-aware, which means you have to invest in yourself with a lot of different tools. That's the quick answer. And I would imagine you'd have to get off the hamster wheel to make that happen. Totally. Take To take a moment. Totally. Well, we're going to take a moment and <laughs> I'm going to talk with uh, Tommy on break about whether or not he thinks everyone is built and wired for transformation. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us. Perfect Day Podcast. We'll be right back after break. I'm going to call this an aha and an oh shit moment. Okay. I, that? I, I love I it. I say that on the Thank air. Thank you. <laughs> yes. So um, the year before, the summer before, I went to the Ad Age Digital Conference in New York in 2011. I was blown away with what was happening. And cloud computing, cloud computing was emerging in a big way. The Apple Store had launched a couple of years before and opened that up to outside developers. So the things were bubbling up and happening and starting to happen in Charleston that I thought were really interesting, exciting. I was doing marketing at the College of Charleston. I went to AdAge, very small conference. Um, Jim uh, Bankoff, who I'll get to in a minute, was one of the speakers. Mm -hmm. Ariana Huffington closed it. Um, but it was a small conference, high level, and I was blown away with the ideas. I came back to Charleston, and then I was also frustrated that we didn't have opportunities to interact on the same level with big thinkers doing projects like that 
in Charleston and across most of the South. It wasn't Amen. happening in the same way right. as New York and Silicon Valley and Boston. Mm-hmm. So um, I thought about that in the fall, and then I decided to launch. I was thinking about launching Dig South. You know, should we do this or should I do something like this? What I have in my skill set, I know lots of people. I've worked on other conferences. I produce many events. Um, I love big ideas, deep thinking. I love technology. So all that was swirling around in my brain. I um, the fall came and I was, you know, Sunny and I were discussing all of this. Then spring uh, 2012, I was thinking about doing it, and then I, I but I let myself get kind of run down too. My back was in bad shape. I just wasn't feeling good. I was sitting at the desk too much at my other job. And I decided to get back in shape, you know, and so I was about to turn, let's see, what year is that? About, you know, 42. So I um, was getting back in shape. I felt great. I came in one morning. I was shaving before work, and I found a lump on my neck. Welcome back to Perfect Day Podcast. We have Tommy Breedlove, uh, tommybreedlove.com. It's where you can look up all things Tommy. Uh, and the founder of Choose Goodness. Yes. So I told you on break I was going to chat uh, with Tommy about transformation. And my specific question was, do you think, uh, and don't answer, and I don't want to censor you, but... Do you think transformation is possible in all people? And the answer was no. No. And, you know, I tend to agree. But what I want to throw out there is, is what I believe is that if someone takes the power within them to Mm. say, I want to be transformed, I believe that person can be transformed. A hundred percent. But I don't believe that everybody chooses to say yes. So I'm glad you I'm glad you agree with me. Um, I think that's huge. But I have censured you because I have to turn the mic back to you and say you have got to tell us. We're, we were talking also on break about Charleston, and you know, does Tommy get there very often? And oh, he said yes. He um, is going to be in Charleston soon. Uh, he serves on a board for Rites of Passage Council, and I said, what What in the world? What is that? And sit down. And listen, <laughs> tell us about Rites of Passage Council and what you did in the North Carolina mountains on your death ceremony. <laughs> it, it, that's all very true. So Rites of Passage Council, to plug the nonprofit I'm involved in, is based in indigenous principles, um, both Native American and African indigenous. And what we've lost as society is these rites of passage, both as young men and young women that were inherent in us for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And so this particular organization takes you through a rite of passage. And the one that I chose was an 11 day death ceremony because there were some things, even this was about a year ago that I wanted to, to work through and wanted to basically die in myself. I mean, how do you even dress up death ceremony? You don't dress it up. It's tough. Well, you know, it's interesting because um, pre-Perfect Day Workshop, (laughs) I'm not plugging, but pre-Perfect Day Workshop, and this is, I usually don't like to reveal this, but one of the things we do is I reach out to people coming to the workshop and I give them these death questions. I say, tell me about what does your epitaph say? What are the three things you're most proud of? What is your biggest regret? Mm. What are people going to say about you at your at your funeral? And what? And be honest, but yeah. okay, that's what they're going to say. But what do you want them to say? Right. And where's the where's the divide? So I have to imagine that that's not what you were doing in the woods for eleven days. No. Okay, so tell us. <laughs> so, so now I'm going to have to change the damn email before so you, the workshop. <laughs> so you go to this particular thing either seeking a vision or something that's deep down inside of you, mm-hmm. or you go to work on specific things. And I was there to work on specific things. And so uh, basically the vision part of the quest, so they prepare you for four days with different ceremonies to go out to the woods to, quote, metaphorically die. And so when you're out in the woods, you're alone. You do not have a tent. There's no food and there's no humans. Are you wearing clothes? You, you weren't, it, that okay. actually toward it's the not end, naked in the toward the end, you don't. Okay. Cause you just don't want to. Wow. And, and so what interesting and that, that was for me. 
because you're the only person out there within a long ways away from each other and you're alone. And it's interesting when you're, you don't have a phone, you don't have books, you have no person to communicate. You're just there with you. What will come up for you during that time? And it's you and the animals and the bugs and it's exposure. There's no food. And so it is going back to primitive and it's only four days or five days, but it's amazing what your mind, your body and your emotions will do when you're alone and you are scared for that particular point of time. So I, I it was wow. so powerful for me, but it's amazing. The first couple of days you're like nervous about all the spiders and bugs and things and snakes and all that. <laughs> By day four, you're like, oh, there's Bob the spider and there's <laughs> there's <laughs> Josie the snake. And you're like one with them. You're in the river naked. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. But I mean, what does crazy. that say about everyday life and what you're afraid of? Uh, completely. It's like snuggle up to it and <laughs> it doesn't look so bad the next day. Yeah. It was just an amazing thing for me and I came out with so much more. And yeah, it's, it, it was just a beautiful. Oh, my gosh. Um, I, the demons that came up for me and the noise was incredible. That. That sounds like an amazing experience <laughs> and would give so much fodder to a framework I like to share and you asked about on break um, for perfect day success and for people to have more perfect days in their mm. life. Uh, I call 411. So 411 is uh, I challenge individuals to get up at 530 in the morning and do their 411. Love it. And it's just about um, choosing the four things that are going to make you have a perfect day that day and getting them done by 11 a.m. That's awesome. Um, you know, I caution you against perfectionism on this on this piece, but I also um, caution you against, you know, picking these big, huge, hard, hairy, ugly tasks. Right. You know, the four on your 411 should really be the things that had you not taken a step back and thought about, hmm, what's going to make today perfect, it wouldn't have made the list. Mm -hmm. And so why do I say this now? I say this now because as you share with the story about you're, you know, putting yourself in a place of vision and putting yourself in a place of being brave and afraid those are the things that make up your four on 411. I love so it. when you take stock at 5:30 in the morning and you get your ass out of bed, you would be <laughs> sleeping anyway. Most people would. Most people would get up. I mean, I, I'm sorry, you can sleep when you're dead. Yeah. I tell people you can go back to sleep. They never do. <laughs> get up at 5:30, write your four, but something on that list has to be something you're afraid of. I don't mm. care if it's a conversation with your spouse, or your boss, or um, maybe yourself, or maybe yourself. Well said. Yeah. Um, but getting out of that comfort zone and being brave um, and vulnerable, putting yourself out there. If that has to be one of the four, I don't like to put people in a in a box, but that's got to be on the list if you want um, transformation in your day. Mm. So transformation in your day can come from 411. Totally. Whether or not you choose uh, to be transformed is your choice. And um, it really is a choice. Right. Happiness, balance, meaning in life. It's all a choice. It really is a tough choice, courageous choice, but it's a choice. And Victor Frankl says, which he wrote that Man's Search for Meaning, mm. which is one of the most powerful books I've ever read. He powerful. said really the only, only true power we have in life is choice. So I love participate in your own rescue. You mentioning that, and you also gave a, a shout out for um, perfect day success. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it sounded like being willing to ask for help. Yeah, and so hard for a lot of us. I have the benefit of being a woman and you being a man, mm -hmm. and you know I know in this day of age right now, there's this high talk of you know sexism in the workplace and inappropriateness in the workplace, and so it's probably very inappropriate for me to sort of do this reverse sexism question <laughs> on you. Hit me. You won't offend me. You can't. But, uh, you know, <laughs> I've it. found in 20 plus years of finance, I mean, I'm a woman in a man's world. Mm. I'm super happy with that. It's fine. Um, I grew up with strong men in my life. Um, you know, I'm good with that. But what I've found with clients in, in t taking them through a perfect day process, it's harder to have those conversations with male subjects totally. about uh, gratitude and, and vulnerability and transformation 
Why do you think that is? I think it's tough for a lot of different reasons for men um, to show weakness, to ask for help. It's been driven in them from a competitive standpoint, from a sports standpoint to, you know, if I put it all out there, will I be made fun of? You know, when I show up naked, will people even dig it? And so we put all these masks and armor on as men Mm -hmm. to portray this Viking tough guy, what I call it's just noise and bullshit. And so the way that I've been able to reach those men is just by telling them my story. You know, they see, I'm not a sage on the stage. I'm not a psychologist. I'm just a dude who's lived it and damn near lost his life a couple of times because of not being able to show emotion. I didn't even know what emotion was. And you were the lucky one. I'm the lucky one. Because not all men or women get the ER moment. Yeah. And, yeah. and live and live through it. You know, some and and what ER moments look like in my clients' lives are um, heart attacks, death, suicide, uh, rehab, divorce. You know, their kids divorce in rehab. Divorce is not necessarily a bad thing all the time. <laughs> not all the time. I I I can agree. It's all like with jobs. You. you can quit or not quit. You can make the best out of it. It's totally up to you. I call a good divorce a successful marriage. <laughs> totally. I mean, if it has to end in totally. divorce, yeah, I right. think it. You know, um, I now find myself newly divorced, and I believe the success in my marriage was how well we were able to get divorced. Wow. So That's I appreciate beautiful. you. That's beautiful. You courageous. mentioning that, yeah, totally. and um, you know, our goal here today was to talk about truth and transparency and and none of the bullshit. I mean, <laughs> I just I just have to tell you, um, I I feel like men need your need your message, and I, uh, the gender roles and um. I feel for you guys mm. because I think you were given a bad rap with, you know, being in the cave and the hunter gatherer and it's, it's going to take many more centuries to, to get that out. But one thing that I do also see in women is that we're starting to put the armor on. Mm-hmm. So we're starting to adopt those caveman because we're, you know, we want equality and I think we deserve it. Um, but as we start putting on armor, I just want to challenge anybody and everybody, make sure you stay vulnerable. Make sure you continue to ask for help because, I mean, perfect days are not on an island by yourself. Um, you know, one of my favorite, um, one of my favorite sayings is, um, I'm not gonna be able to say it cause it's one of my favorites, right? <laughs> it's, um, Isn't that amazing? happiness is best when shared. Mm, totally. So, so, it's about having a village around you that's Always. a part of it. It's not about, you know, I'm the king or queen of, of, of my business or my organization. Um, so I want to hear a little bit more about Choose Goodness and this movement that yeah. you are the founder of because the world needs to hear that story. Yeah, so Choose Goodness initially just started as a benchmark for me as a human and man um, from a guy who unconsciously and didn't feel like I had permission to choose. And I was so worried about what everybody else thought of me and am I good enough? And, but it was masks and all that stuff we just talked about in armor, arrogance, toughness. I'm going to outwork you. I'm going to outsmart you. I'll step on you if I have to in a professional sense. Right. And I right. came from a world where they really, they literally stepped on you. Um, so choose goodness for someone who felt like he, a didn't have a choice um, really started as a benchmark for me and every small or big decision I made, have, I would ask myself, have I chose goodness for me? Um, cause I do believe you have to love and serve yourself before you can go serve your families, your communities and your businesses. That's mm-hmm. to me, it's a Absolutely. universal truth. I call that commander's intent. Yeah. So in the book, you'll hear about a commander's intent. Nice. And so yours is choose goodness. Choose goodness. So it's your filter. Yeah. Right? And it's really about, and you keep saying the word and I don't even know if you know it. Um, the power of choice, but making choices from a clear, conscious and courageous space. Mm. And those three things are really hard when you're in the heat of the moment or the heat of the marriage or the heat of the relationship or the heat of your business. Conscious means you're present with that choice. I'm right here right now. And I know that I'm making this choice. It's clear because I'm not worried about what people think and the noise. And I'm going to take the damn courage to take that step, even if regardless of what other people think. That's what Choose Goodness is all about. I love it. Yeah. I, uh, Tommy, I'm going to challenge you, and I can't wait for you to join <laughs> us for 411 Live. Sweet. 
because I want to hear what you're going to consciously and uh, choose with clarity as to your four things you're going to get done before 11 oh, a.m. Awesome. Yeah. So tune in. Tommy's going to join us. That's <laughs> going to be amazing. Um, I, it was such if a I pleasure. In the morning, I will have nothing to do, I promise. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I look forward to that. For all things Cokie, including 411, your ticket to more perfect days. Find me at kokiebarini.com. Tommy, thank you so much. Uh, look him up, all things Tommy. Yeah. TommyBreedLove.com. Sweet.